I have got a lot of really fun geeky projects going on this weekend. First of all, I've got my grad thesis. I'm working on the hardware and software and the presentation uh, all this weekend. Presentation is going to sneak up on me, so I know I have to start preparing how I present this thing I'm making. And I'm going to tell you guys more about it in the future. I know I've, I've given you some hints and I've sort of worked through some issues when it comes to thesis uh, on this channel. But I'm going to hold off for now until I've got something that's a little bit closer to what I'm going to present so that I can perhaps rehearse with you guys a little bit of how I present the project. Um, the other thing I'm working on this weekend is the Beagle Bone. Uh, I've talked about it before. There's a new Beagle Bone coming out very, very soon. And I think you're going to like it for a few reasons. First of all, new hardware, you're going to like it a lot. It's it's a, it's faster, it's better, it's got some new features. Uh, uh, in, the, in the description to this video, I'll put a link to where I talk about more specifics about what we know. Um, I've got a board here. I like the board a lot. I've been using it and enjoying it a lot. There's also new software on the board. And if you're an old BeagleBone user, this is good news for you as well because the software is going to run on the old boards as well, the original BeagleBone and you get a lot of cool new features with the software and the new Linux kernel uh, 3.8. And also another cool thing about the new BeagleBone that's coming out, the price. You guys are really gonna like the price, I think. And I think that's uh, one cool thing. And I can't talk about it anymore, but you'll be finding out in due time. And I'll certainly be talking about it on this channel when it does happen, right as soon as I can. Anyway. Uh, so the I, what I need to work on with a beagle bone is this. So we got all these pins on the beagle bone. They can do lots of different things and they can be assigned different functions. And we call that pin multiplexing or pin muxing. And I wrote a Python library that makes it a little bit more simple to play around with the pins without having to deal with pin muxing. The problem comes in with the fact that uh, the new software is going to use the Linux kernel 3.8, which has a new way of defining how pins are defined. And it it's uses something called device tree. So there's a new way we've got to work around with this device tree to say what we're doing. And it means that I need to rework my whole library. And I was looking at the Arduino Uno. And if you look at it, there are these digital pins on the top. And then there are these analog in pins on the bottom. And the analog in pins I know can actually be digital inputs and outputs as well, but they don't say that. They don't tell you. They just say, oh, they're analog in. Don't worry about it. And it really simplifies things. And I think that's an important part of the success of Arduino. Even though you've got a lot of power and it can do a lot of things and it's a very, very flexible uh, uh, development chip here um, or a development board. Uh, even though it's very, very flexible, they actually take away a lot of that flexibility just to make it more simple and easier to use so that the silk screen and the labels on here just match up with what you're coding and you don't have to worry about different numbers and everything. So now that I have to rework my library to use the new, uh, the new device tree so that I can work with uh, pin multiplexing, I was wondering if perhaps I should take that approach with my library by saying, okay, here's a chart that looks like a beagle bone. This pin is always going to be digital input or output. So is this one, this one, this one through this one? Okay, this one's always going to be serial. Even though it could be digital input and output, I'm going to say that's just serial. This one could be a PWM pin, but and it could be a lot of others, but I'm just going to say it's only PWM. And that's the approach I think I want to start off and take and just say like, hey, you've got one chart, one set of functions, you know, there will be a little asterisk saying, yes, you can change these functions, but by default, this is what you're getting out of the box without changing anything. And I, I wanted to throw that approach out there to you guys, what you guys thought of it. And if you guys are hardware developers, if you have any input on that at all, I'm actually thinking about this weekend doing a hangout on air. If any of you are interested and you want to talk about that, I'd love to talk about it. If you want to get on Google Plus and we can send it off to the channel as an experiment. So if you know anything about Linux kernel 3.8 or device tree or you're really into how hardware works and we can we can kind of geek out, I'm open to it. Let's talk about it. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Hopefully you guys can relax and, uh, and take it easy. It's been a bit of a tense week, so... Um, uh, I, I, you know, it may be some hacking and making will will take your mind off what's going on up in Boston. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description to something else that might uh, distract you and is a little bit of fun. Just check it out, open it up, and resize your window. Have a great day. Bye.